Planner Walk is my favourite New Zealander, right behind Carl Urban and Edmund Hillary and Rowan from Viva La Dirt League. Is top five, easy. And recently they've been bashing out the flat earth content like they're possessed. So what better way to keep that going than inviting them on the channel? Roll the credits. Ahoy ahoy all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Planner Walk. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin, a big thank you to Simon Dan for letting me on his channel. Today we are going to be looking at a flat earther who, when I first saw him, I thought he was just joking, but the more content that I've seen from him, the more I think that he might actually be a legitimate flat earther. Hey guys, you might know me as KCD Industry on TikTok. Well, I'm no longer KCD Industry on TikTok. Okay, so you're now Caleb.fe on TikTok. Wonder what happened there to cause the name change? Why? <laughs> oh, well, I opened TikTok about 20 minutes ago and it said account status, logged out. I'm like, what the hell? I just need to log back in? Okay. Oh, I wasn't logged out. I was permanently banned. Again. Ah, ban evasion. That's why. You know, Flat Earthers are actually really good at that. I assume that it has something to do with all the mental gymnastics that they have to do to just be a flat earther. So, you know, having to dodge something like a ban becomes very easy for them. Now, of course, I understand that TikTok can be quite trigger happy when it comes to bans. And I don't know what he was banned for. So I'm not saying whether the ban was a good thing or a bad thing. But there is a reason why I'm showing you this, because this video is just hilarious. I guess it's time to start our flat earth journey all over again. <laughs> what, you think I'm mad? You think I'm sad? You think you can break my spirit? <laughs> no, my followers are just lost. They'll find me. Yes, they are very lost indeed. I think that it might have something to do with that flat earth journey that you mentioned about earlier. You know, it's not a good idea to play follow the leader where the leader is a flat earther. Because they think that flat maps are completely accurate, you are going to get lost. But with your guys' help, I think that we can help a lot of my lost followers find me again. You are the one that got them lost. If it weren't for you saying, hey, let's play follow the leader, then your followers would not have gotten lost. Don't expect me to help. I had nothing to do with this. You need to take responsibility. Okay, a flat earther taking responsibility sounds kind of scary. Also, the heliocentric model completely violates the second law of thermodynamics, so look into that. Okay, now he's actually made a claim that we can dig into, and he's just wrong. The second law of thermodynamics states that in a closed system, entropy tends to increase. Now, entropy, when talking about thermodynamics, refers to the amount of energy in a system that cannot be used to do work. Now, the atmosphere being held to Earth by gravity does not violate the second law of thermodynamics in any way because that does not decrease entropy in any way. Of course, this completely ignores the fact that there is a pressure gradient, which flat earthers have yet to explain. I'll say you've got to go so high to see the curvature of the Earth because we're so small. But then again, just contradict themselves completely and say that this is curvature right here. If you want to see an obviously curved horizon with your eyes, then yes, you have to go quite high. If you want to see the effects of curvature, like let's say boats disappearing over the horizon, then being closer to the ground actually helps with that. These are not two contradictory claims because they are not the same claim. They are two different claims. This is, uh, this is an axe on a, on a tree, not like, what else would it be? <laughs> Here's an idea, maybe it's a, I don't know, a, a rock on a rock. In fact, I was actually able to find that rock formation. It's called the King of Wings in New Mexico. Here it is from a different angle, and you'll notice that in the background, there are some very similar rock formations. It's very strange that no one is claiming that the rocks in the background are axes left on trees because they don't actually look like axes left on trees. It's just the one rock formation that kind of looks like an axe on a tree. This is a very obvious case of pareidolia. Now, nobody tell Roger about this, please. Now, here's something that may come as a bit of a surprise. Everything that I've shown you in this video from Caleb Fe has all been from one video. In the course of less than two minutes, he managed to talk about getting banned, losing a whole lot of flat earthers during a game of follow the leader and not knowing where they are, 
A whole lot of random flat earth claims and a claim that sounds like it came from Mud Fossil University. At least it isn't a two hour live stream where nothing gets said like a lot of other flat earthers do. Anyway, let's see what other breakneck bollocks he has to say. How to understand that the earth isn't spinning in 60 seconds using planes. Okay, this is gonna be fun. Him trying to use planes to convince me to become a flat earther when I'm Wolfie 3010. We're told that the Earth spins a thousand miles an hour. Well, it actually spins at a rate of 15 degrees per hour because rotation is not measured in miles per hour. And you don't have to take my word for it that it spins at 15 degrees per hour. Just ask this guy. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks, Bob. So hypothetically, and that's the only way that I can speak about the spin of the Earth, because it's all hypothetical. We were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. That is not hypothetical. That is an actual thing that happens. If you don't believe me, then a ring laser gyroscope is only $20,000 and you can test it yourself. And hey, maybe Bob is still trying to sell this, so you might be able to get it cheaper. Um, but if we took a flight from California to New York and then from New York back to California, science tells us that the flight going from California to New York isn't longer because you'd think it would be because the Earth is spinning a thousand miles per hour with us going east to New York, but it's simply not because apparently gravity pulls the atmosphere and the plane perfectly with the spin. Well, no, it is not gravity. It is simply conservation of momentum. If you were inside of a plane cruising at a constant altitude and you decided to jump inside of the plane, you would not slam into the back wall. This is because momentum doesn't magically disappear simply because you're not on a surface that's moving. But you guys have got serious problems going back from New York to California, though. We'd be going against the spin of the earth, meaning the flight should be shorter, but I looked at them, they're like minutes off. Again, conservation of momentum is a thing. You're trying to debunk the globe by ignoring the laws of physics. Maybe that's why NASA always assumes a flat, non-rotating earth in their documents. Well, the more likely explanation for that is simplicity. If you try to account for something like the earth spinning when you don't actually need to, then you're making your job more complicated than it actually needs to be. Anyway, you have a video that talks a bit about those documents, so why don't we take a look at it? Here's a list here of every year that a US patent was released on how to control the weather. Feel free to search any of these patents up. Okay then, I'll do that. Let's take a look at that propellant system one. All right, so this is a patent that was on the list and it's supposed to be about controlling the weather, remember? So when we actually read it, turns out that it's about fuel for rocket and jet engines. That's not controlling the weather, buddy. However, hold on to your clips of Nigel Cheesy hands saying oops, because there is one mention of weather control on this page. It's right down in the cited by section, right here. If we take a look at this patent, it's certainly a patent about weather control. I'm not gonna disagree with you there. However, we can go right down to the patent citations. Every single one of these patents right here is in that list. So we can take a look at these patents. We could take a look at the smoke producing mixture one, for example, which has nothing to do with weather control. It's to produce a smoke screen for use in something like warfare. Now, if we look at the cited by section, we can see that there are two publications that have a publication date that could place them on that list. Only one of them is in that list. The one that's on the list is the metal chloride screening smoke mixture. Now, if we go back over to the one about weather control, we can see that that one also cites the metal chloride screening smoke mixture one. So what is clearly going on here is someone Googled to see if they could find patents about weather control. They saw that a few patents mentioned it somewhere in the patent, didn't bother to read the patent to see if it was actually about weather control, and then made a list with what they found. Oops. But the thing that baffles me the most is why lie about it and say that all the things on that list were about how to control the weather? You know, cloud seeding is real. You don't have to make up stuff about the government having controlled the weather when the government has controlled the weather. Sure, you might not get a nice long scary list, but you shouldn't need a nice long scary list in order to make your point. Here's three documents from NASA admitting the Earth is flat and non-rotating. 
The DPS equations of motion use four assumptions that simplify the program while maintaining its fidelity for most maneuvers and applications, point mass modeling, non-turbulent atmosphere, zero side forces, and a non-rotating earth. Okay, so it literally says there that it's making four assumptions to simplify the program, not four assumptions about how reality actually is. Especially given that one of the assumptions there is a non-turbulent atmosphere. Now, if we were to take these assumptions as absolute truth, then why hasn't a non-turbulent atmosphere society popped up? This report documents the derivation and definition of a linear aircraft model for a rigid aircraft of constant mass flying over a flat, non-rotating Earth. Again, this is used for simplification, but let's talk about the non-turbulent atmosphere society for a second. Because if we actually read the part in the report about a flat, non-rotating Earth, we can also see that it mentions a stationary atmosphere. So, who's going to start the non-turbulent atmosphere society? Because clearly, we've all been lied to about the turbulence of the atmosphere. Last one. The model frequently used is that of a flat, non-rotating Earth. <laughs> Again, it is literally talking about it being a simplification. Have you not read the surrounding text that provides context here? But these new documents that I found last night on the CIA's website is gonna surprise you probably. Alright then, this is something new. I'm excited. However, he didn't sound very confident when he said this is going to surprise you because he had to add that probably after. Photographic observations of the spectral intensity of the firmament? The spectral brightness of the firmament along the alsocanter of the sun was observed. Here's a document. The color temperature of the firmament. Investigation on the zodiacal light, provisional results obtained by the observation of the Soviet expedition in Egypt of the diurnal firmament can contain can attain up to 70 percent okay so you're admitting it there is a hard fast barrier above us and it's not called the Van Allen belts just like the science community is trying to perpetuate now you know firmament doesn't have to mean dome like you're thinking it can literally mean sky in fact, you could take those documents, take the word firmament out and replace it with the word sky, and it would still make sense. However, I decided to have a quick skim over these documents because whenever I do that, it seems that it doesn't turn out well for this guy. Okay, so here we have the document that was talked about, and we can go to page 35, and there we see something about interplanetary dusk. More so, interplanetary dust at a distance of 0.05 AU otherwise known as astronomical units. So the document that supposedly proves that Earth has a dome over it also talks about interplanetary dust that is 7 million kilometers away. <laughs> Oops. Oops. They tell you the truth in the patents, in the papers, in the documents. They just hope that you won't go reading them. Me? I'm gonna continue reading these patents and I'm gonna find the truth. Okay, here's a pro tip. Why don't you actually read what you say that you've read? Because they all seem to disagree with you when I actually read them. Anyway, I think this is a good place to end it. So if you want to see more, I have a channel called Planet Walk and you can see more of my content over there. And I might even make a second video to this video. This was a really fun video to make, by the way. But like I mentioned before, we are all done and dusted for another Flat Earth Friday. If you enjoyed this video, consider hitting the subscribe button, not only on Simon Dan's channel, but my channel. I'm trying to get to 50,000 subscribers this year. And if you really, really enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like on it as well. It really helps the channel out. Just enough time for me to once again thank Simon Dan for bringing me onto his channel. It is very much appreciated. I have been Planet Walk. Between you and me, thank you for watching.